Welcome to Revelations of a Delusional Knitter. I'm Angela, your host. This is episode 101, and it is Wednesday, September 17th, 2014. On to updates and housekeeping. Welcome if you are new. If you are returning, I thank you as always. Either way, I hope you enjoy and continue to watch the show. If you are on iTunes, if you could leave a star rating and or review, I would appreciate it. Podcast is also on YouTube, so you can leave comments there as well. And there's the Ravelry group that you can come and join some discussions or leave comments about the episodes. Week in review. Well, it's been a little over two weeks now because the last time I recorded was August 31st. And not much has happened. I've just worked and it's about all I've done. <laughs> um, work, knit, watch TV, that's about it. So I really don't have anything exciting to go over about that. I did get another little sheep again at CVS Pharmacy. I don't know why I keep finding him there. Behind me is the big white sheep. Now he's got a little gray buddy because I couldn't pass him up. He's only three ninety nine, so I picked him up when I was at CVS and saw him. That's about it. So on to Revelations. The Knitters Guild Association Master Hand Knitting Program Level 1. I have gotten quite a bit done over the last couple of weeks, and actually a lot of it took place within three days that I was off last week. So what that is, is you, there's a program that you follow, there's a bunch of different swatches that you knit, it's a bunch of research and written work that you have to do, and um, it's fairly easy, it's just time consuming, but you do learn a lot while you're doing it. And I have knit all but one of the swatches. And one is currently blocking because I had to re-knit it because part of the program is they expect you to follow directions as they are written. So, because if you're following a pattern and it tells you to knit something a certain length, if you want it to look the way the pattern does, then you need to do that. So the swatch I just re-knit, this is the, the one prior to it, is the Colorwork swatch. And the reason I re-knit it is because after blocking, the measurements were not what they were supposed to be. Each of these white portions of ribbing is supposed to be one inch. And they also understand that your row gauge is not going to be exactly one inch all the time. You know, rows in knitting are not going to come up to be exactly like that. However, it cannot be wildly different, and wildly meaning, you know, a quarter of an inch, which mine was a quarter of an inch over on both sections, and that equates to an entire row. So that's pretty easy to fix. I just re it minus one row on each of the ribbing um, white sections. So the other one is currently blocking, but this is, it looks just like this. It's just a little bit smaller. And the te techniques for this one were doing some color change in ribbing without it having um, the pearl bump changes because it would look like the back if you didn't use a certain technique to alleviate that problem. And the other one is um, joining yarn. So here it's done in color so that they can clearly see where you join the yarn and if you wove the ends in properly to um, alleviate any gaps or weird things going on and I don't know who that is. I'm just gonna hang up because it's a telemarketer and they've been calling all day and they're really making me angry. So <laughs> hopefully they don't call right back. Um so yeah that this watch is redone and blocking and all of my other swatches I have sitting here flat on my desk so that they won't get all crinkled, wrinkled, or whatever. Because another part of the program is that you must, must properly block your swatches as you would a finished garment and block them correctly. So all of the swatches are, there's four that are different stitch techniques. There's garter stitch, stockinette stitch, ribbing on both of those. There's seed stitch. And then there's a cable swatch, and those all have to do with um, gauge. And then there's some lace swatches, increases, decreases. I don't know if I said that already. So that's what all the swatches are in that bag. And when you block them, 
what blocking them properly means is, for example, this is a cable swatch and what you need to do is make sure that you block it so that you don't kill the cables and um, also you don't kill the pearl section. So by kill I mean, you know, stretch it out so that you flatten out the cable or um, the pearl sections no longer look like pearl sections and you just stretch it out too much or whatever and things like that. So that's what I've been working on for that program and you also have to block the back to make sure that um, your stockinette edges are not curling in on themselves and, and they're blocked properly. This one, I believe, um, from what I've seen and everything, is fine because that's the salvage. It's going to turn in no matter what because those stitches on the salvage edge don't have anything to hold on to them on the other side so they kind of twist to the side. And that would be normally in a garment what you would seam in anyway. So, been doing that a lot and then well, I haven't been working on that. Ravello now has its second sleeve that's almost done because I'm past the stripes and back onto the main color, which I'm happy about because the stripes aren't long and it's not a big deal, but because this is in the round and this is now the second sleeve, I have the whole sweater in my lap that I keep having to shift around to knit around the sleeve. And with the second color attached also, you know, all your yarns get wrapped around each other and it's just a big pain in the butt. So now it's going a lot quicker because I only have one yarn to <laughs> fight with while I'm um, rolling this around in my lap. But this is my Ravello. And it's in fingering weight yarn. One of them is Knit Picks Stroll and the other one is some leftover um, Malabrigo that I had. So the yellow bit is the leftover Malabrigo that I had. So I have one sleeve that is done. I haven't woven in any ends as you can see. And the other sleeve is almost done. And also, I'm really trying to finish this one up because I believe, I have to do a gauge swatch first, but the project for level one of the Master Hand Enders program is a mitten, colorwork mitten, and I believe I need these needles for it. I don't technically have to finish the sleeve, I just have to get to the ribbing because that's on a different size needle and then I can pull these out. But um, yeah, I'm trying to finish up that sleeve. I don't know if I'll finish it today, but um, definitely within the next couple of days because there's not a whole ton left of it. The other thing I've been knitting on, um, is a pair of plain vanilla socks. And this yarn, I can't find the ball band at all because I actually wound this yarn, I split it in half into two cakes like three years ago. And it was sitting back there in the bookcase. So I have no idea where the tag is. And typically when I do that and I know I'm not gonna use the yarn quickly or I change my mind and I'm not gonna use the yarn, when I wind yarn, what I do is I stick the label up there I have some shelves up there on the desk while I'm working on the project and then later I just have in one of those drawers back there like a plastic ziploc bag with a whole bunch of yarn tags in them. If I know I'm not going to use the yarn right away I will take the tag and I will stick it in the center of the cake. I don't know where this tag is at all. I'm pretty sure this yarn is opal and I wish I could find the tag because I it was some special opal that intentionally did this like lightning effect and I even think it was called like lightning somewhere in the name but I searched for it online and I can't I can't find it so whatever it's some opal yarn I don't know what it is anymore and I'm also on these I typically do not make a toe that wide this is toe up socks with a difference by Wendy Johnson and this is what the pattern calls for I've used this pattern several times, like five or six I think, but typically what I do is I cast on eight stitches per needle, I believe, yeah, and then increase from there. I just decided this time I'm just going to follow her pattern exactly because also in the past I usually use um, make ones for the toe increases where you lift the stitch below. and. In her pattern, she just does a knit through the front and the back loop, so I'm doing that as well. And I'm just following the pattern exactly as it is to see how they come out. So that's those. 
And this one too, I talked about them briefly before, but I hadn't used them yet. These are the black, black, oh shoot. I don't know. Blackthorn, that's what I wanted to say, but I thought I was wrong. Double points. And these are um, from Webbs in Massachusetts. And I bought them on sale when Webbs had a big sale recently online because Webbs is like an hour and a half away from me. And then later I was looking at reviews and a lot of people complained about them. And I was like, oh, I guess I should have looked at that before I bought them. But they were really on super sale, so they were not very expensive, so it's fine. And actually, I don't really find the problems that other people have found with them. They're carbon fiber, completely. So there's no metal tip or anything like that, like some other carbon fiber needles have. And carbon fiber is a little bit, it's hard for me to describe. It's, it's slick, but it does have a lot of texture to it. As you can see, I'm pushing this needle right now, and it's barely moving through the stitches. So that was one of the complaints. However, I kind of like them like, you know, wood needles where they're not going to fall out of my sock at all. But working, when you work with them too, with the other needle in the stitch, it kind of lifts it up off the needle so it doesn't really have as much of a drag. But the biggest complaint people had was that they made this horrendous noise because with the two textures of the two needles hitting each other, they kind of, it's almost like sandpaper. But I found after I used them for a little bit, it kind of polished them off a little bit at the tips and it stopped. I never heard a horrendous noise, but I, I can see definitely where that could happen with people. Especially if they're really knitting tightly and really, you know, scraping the needles against each other. I can see where that would come from. But otherwise, I like them. But they are quite grabby. So they do kind of stick to the yarn a little bit. Um, but nothing horrendous. And I have two toes here. If I can get the other one out. So right now they're pretty much at the same point. I think one I might have knit. They're completely um, increased. So now I'm on the straight knitting until I get to the heel. And I think one I just knit a couple more rounds on. So those are my plain socks. That seems like an enormous mouthful just to talk about plain socks. <laughs> That's what it is. And by the way, it's already happening. Today, I am having a horrendous day. I am in a horrible, angry mood. And I am having one of those days where everything I do is a complete disaster. Like, spilling things in the kitchen, dropping things, tripping over things, things are not working right, things are not opening right, thing, you know, stab myself in the eye with a DPN kind of day. So, I did not do that, but it will probably happen later. So bear with me, because I am like this far away from a complete meltdown. <laughs> if it happens, I will edit it out. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm a little uh, not happy today. So, that's it for Revelations. That's all I've been knitting on recently. And String Theory. I haven't done any spinning, so we can just skip right over String Theory, because I really have not focused on any spinning at all. This month, one of the Ravelry boards I'm on is focusing on cotton, and at the beginning of the month, I was spinning a lot, actually, if I can find it, I can show you, on my Tockley, and, you know, see, like that, I just ripped that right off the other fiber. Um, I wanted to practice at least, like, five, ten minutes every day for the month of September, but then other things happened, so I didn't. I stopped doing it like last week, but I got quite a bit done, and it's coming out very good. I'm actually, um, since I set it down for a week though, I'll have to see, but I was finally at the point where I could make a very consistent single and keep going and keep making a very consistent single, because that's the thing with cotton. You have to use long draw, um, which you kind of do anyway on a sports spindle, because you really only have one hand to draw with. And cotton is a very short stapled fiber, so it's very easy to get slubs in it and um, thick and thin spots. But because of the nature of cotton and the way it works with the long draw, you can um, 
draw the slubs out while you're spinning. It just it's just a different technique and it, it takes a little bit of practice but it does work so that you can even if you are getting slubs you can alleviate them. And um, I was getting pretty good at it. So scrolls. I don't have a book review. I just want to talk about um, a book that is pretty much like an encyclopedia of knitting or a knitting bible, whatever you want to call it. And that is The Principles of Knitting by June Hemmons Hyatt. Some people have some complaints about it, which I understand and I will tell you about. My biggest problem with this book right now that I'm using for the Master Knitters program, I bought the e-version, which was not a good idea. <laughs> And I don't think I will purchase a reference book in the e-version format ever again because it's really difficult to find things. For this book, it does have an index and it is hotlinked with pages so you can click on it on your device and go to that page. However, I believe this book is a large book in print. So even if I click on a page on my device, on my device, a page spans four pages on my device. So if I click a link from the index, it goes to that page. However, it could be three pages on my device further for the thing that I'm looking for. Um, the other thing people I've heard a lot of um, talk about is that the author decided for whatever reason to reinvent names for everything. So for example, what typically is referred to as continental knitting or left hand or English knitting or right hand or picking or throwing she made up a completely different name for it. and also did that for cast ons <laughs> bind offs and many other things so it could be difficult to find something you're looking for because you don't even know what the name of it is in the book um, it makes sense. I can kind of see where she was going, and she also described why she did that in the book. But it's it's like a, the long tail cast on is the long tail cast on, and everybody knows that. So why did you make up a new name for it? I think in the book, I don't even remember. It's called like the knit half hitch something or other cast on. It's like not even anywhere near a long tail cast on. It has nothing. The name has nothing to do with long tail cast on. So. In addition to my e-version, where the pages don't match up because the pages aren't big enough on the device to equate to one page, you're also looking for something that you don't even know what it's called, so you don't even really know what you're looking for. Another thing people mentioned is that all throughout the book, you're told, you know, you're talking about this thing, and it says, oh, this also relates to, or go see this and it says the random name that you don't know what it is and it also says in the such and such section doesn't give you a page number doesn't give you a chapter so where am I looking that kind of a thing other than that though for information and quantity and quality of information it's an absolutely excellent book so if you can get over the nomenclature and the actual physical trying to find things once you find the information it's absolutely wonderful information it's just a little tricky to navigate what I'm doing right now because aside from techniques it's just got a lot of verbiage that has to do with like discussion of the technique um, I'm just reading it I'm reading through the whole thing <laughs> and if I get to a point where it's just a technique or I'm not interested in that thing I'll just skip right over it and then start reading the next thing I think just to familiarize myself with the book so when I am going to go look for something I can go find it but yeah other than those are the cons but the pros are it really covers anything and everything you can think of and very detailed and it's a wonderful wonderful resource so that's what I have to say about the principles of knitting I do not recommend getting the ebook version it's less expensive but I think it's a lot more difficult to navigate and I have a bunch of other books on my wish list for knitting references for later on for the Master Knitters program. I'm not going to buy an e-version of a reference book ever again because it is just way too difficult to navigate. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. So that was scrolls. And now testaments. I did want to mention I was taking a craftsy class 
Um, cause actually the, if you're a, a member of the Knitters Guild Association, Craftsy did a little promotion with them and we all got one free class recently. So that was pretty cool. And the one I chose was Improve Your Knitting, Alternative Methods and Styles with Patty Lyons. And she's Patty Lyons from Lion Brand Yarns. And what it is is the techniques of knitting, um, throwing, picking, um, Portuguese, and combination. So it goes over the major techniques of knitting. And then the reason I got it, I was very interested in um, knitting and purling backwards. So it also shows you how you can do it backwards so you don't have to flip your work. You can just go back across the row. And it also goes into, because um, I did watch the section on English knitting, because that's primarily how I knit. Just some tips and techniques to keep your tension even, you know, not get um, wrist or hand fatigue while you're knitting, and just a bunch of little tips and tricks are thrown in there as well. So even if you know how to knit with a certain method, if you watch the section on that method that you knit, you might pick up a couple of things or find a way to do something a little bit easier. So it's really cool. And tomorrow, starting tomorrow through the 22nd, Crafty is going to have another big sale. Um, up to 50% off, so I'm going to post that on the Ravelry board tomorrow as soon as I can. Um, so that if you are interested in that class, but you maybe don't want to pay full price, you can take advantage of that sale. I'll put a link in there so that you can get um, the discount. Alright, and now we're on to Harrisay. So, seasonal socks and are long. The current session ends the 21st, which is a couple days from now. And we're up to 32 entries right now, so a lot less than before, but I figured it's September, you know, people have more going on now in the fall and stuff like that, but that gives you a better chance to win a prize. So there's going to be four prizes for this um, session, so make sure you get your entries in. They had to have been knit within the frame of this session, which was June something, June 22nd, I believe, to now. And, yeah, go and do that. I do have some Ravelry patterns for you today. Let's see if this cooperates. This will probably not go well at all. Alright, and the first one is called Sheepy Draughts and the Wolf 2 by Orly Colas. It's 586 US. And there's, it's actually 25% off through September. I'm not sure if this is the coupon code or if it comes up while there's no coupon code I'm not sure if that's the 25% off price or if when you put it in your cart it'll deduct 25% I'm not entirely sure so it's a baby blanket but it comes like a checkerboard because apparently that's what draughts are called in England and it's a checkerboard with little sheepies all over it it's so cute and the sheep are not attached <laughs> So you can actually play the game if you want. I'll show you a picture of them loose. It's just super, super cute. Come on, this is a long picture. So it's got, there's a bunch of the little sheeps all there. Really, really cute idea. And the next one is Heaven Mitts by Lily Homey Toad? I don't know, I'm sure I killed that name. And it's a very simple gauntlet style knit pattern. It's intended for you to use a fancy yarn like cashmere or something. And it's got like garter stitch detail, but it's just a very simple pattern, but it's really, really pretty. And I like it a lot. And I'll show you a. I love that ring she's wearing too. So here they are, or not. I know I'm clicking the button because it makes that little sound. It just ignores me. Sometimes I think my fingers are too cold. So here's the whole mitt so you can see it. Well that's a really cool pattern. And that one is 519 US. That's also in originally not in the US. Um, it's also Euro. And my favorite things Infinity Scarf by Jill McGee. 
And this was a really cool one. It's free. It's great use of leftovers. And it's a stranded color work tube that you graft together at the end. And it also, the pattern page also links to um, video tutorials and stuff like that for those techniques. So what it is, is you can go find color work motifs of whatever you want and make your own scarf with your favorite things on it. So that's a really cool idea. And that one, I think I may do that one. Although it'll probably go the way of the sock yarn blanket and take me five years, but I thought that was a really, really cool idea. And then I have Far Me by Evelina Ruse that is also free. It's a colorwork sock pattern with she bought it. This one I definitely have to make. I know I don't have these colors in my stash, so I'll probably have to get some yarn for it, but that is so cool. I love it. I love those colors too. I want like those colors. I think I would, I actually might have a green in my stash that would work for that, because that I think would look fine in a variegated, because it's supposed to be grass. So, but that one's really, really cool. And that is also free. I don't know if I said that. And that's it for your Ravelry patterns. I also wanted to mention, I'm a member of the Ravelry group Budding Designers, because I do design things sometimes. But, even if you're not interested in designing things yourself, if you join that group, um, every month they put a sticky thread where designers can post their new designs. So it's an easy way to quickly see things that people are putting up that they've just designed. And also, usually a lot of times, if there's a coupon code or something, they put it right there in their posting. Um, so it's a really cool way to keep tabs on new upcoming designs that are coming out. And I have two minutes left before the camera shuts off on me for this recording. And, like I said before, I haven't been doing a whole ton of other things but working on some knitting and trying to finish up the um, Master Hand Knitters program. So, what I'm going to do, because the only other thing I've been doing is reading Allegiant by Veronica Roth, and I don't even know what I watched for TV recently, because now that I'm back on the 3 to 11, I don't have time at work to watch television because it's really busy. <laughs> it's not 3 a.m. with nothing happening. I don't even recall watching anything new, so I don't have anything to say about that. So I think what I'm going to do before I break something or spill my tea in my lap, <laughs> since I've covered everything I wanted to cover, I'm going to let you go. So I do plan on recording next week. Hopefully Ravello will be done and you'll see a finished sweater. And I have some stuff that I want to talk about next week that I can't talk about yet. It's too early. So in the meantime, happy knitting and spinning, and I hope you have a wonderful week.